It is. Well, we're out here. Eli with me. This is uh, New Year's Eve. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're out here in Eli Whitney, North Carolina. Last day. Last day, big day. So we've got a new fun game. We're on our way to somewhere in Tennessee. We're in North Carolina. And the ad blue is dangerously low. We've got over 200 miles to go. I've put DEF in it and it hasn't reset. There's like a full tank in there. So we're gonna try and shoot it to a dealership, put ad blue in it. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna have to send it. We're in uh, Audi Greensboro, North Carolina. Come down here and buy a vehicle from them. They're nice people. Nice people out here. God damn. I hope this works. Fuck. I know. That's so cool. Alrighty. Yep, shove her in there. Yep. What's up, YouTube? Back at you with more junk. I'm the Audi guy, and this time we got something you're either really gonna hate or you're really gonna like. But it don't matter, because I like it. What we have here, guys, is a 2014 970.2 Porsche Panamera Turbo. I went to Johnson City, Tennessee for this car. My aunt lives in North Carolina, so I stayed with her when I drove down. And then the car was about four hours away from her in Tennessee. Then I drove the car back to North Carolina and then we drove it back to Boston. And yes, the hard fact is that I got rid of my D4A8L TBI for this 970.2 Panamera, which is an absolutely astonishing, beautiful car. I'm into this vehicle for about $48,400. And I'm really happy because it's actually worth a little bit more than that. It's got 119,000 miles on it, but it's so it's hard to pass up. It's got a great history. I'm the third owner. The second owner drove it for over 100,000 miles. The car started in Porsche Atlanta, went down to Florida, and then back to Atlanta, and then to the dealer in Tennessee. So we'll run through the particular specs on this vehicle in a second, but I'm gonna tell you in 2014, the first owner bought the car for $159,000 sold it in 2014 with 3,400 or 3,500 miles on it and the second owner then bought it and drove it to about 110,000 miles and then about 6,000 more miles and then I got it but that's a little bit of the history on this car which I found quite interesting it doesn't ever appear to be in an accident it looked like it was lightly tapped in the rear but and to be honest like almost every single car on earth gets into some kind of This 970.2 is basalt black metallic over natural leather Cognac. And it's got these beautiful two-tone 20-inch wheels on it. I'm glad it doesn't have carbon ceramics because I don't have 20 grand to replace brakes every single time. And luckily, these have been replaced with Porsche parts, so the brakes are good. The tires are a little questionable. They're brand new, but they're just questionable brand. Here we'll go into the inside. Natural leather Cognac. We've got Burmester Audio. Obviously, it's a turbo. Sport Chrono. We've got Air Suspension. Sport Plus. We've got Lane Keep. Um, and we've got Lane Assist down here. In the rear, we've got full electric blinds on the corner window and the main window. We also have a fully electric blind blocking the hatch here. Four proper captain's chairs. Again with the Burmester audio. This car is a little special. We've got four zone digital climate back here and obviously control for the rear shade. I know it doesn't have TVs. It's not an executive. It doesn't have rear electric seat comfort cooling, but it's a short wheelbase, which means it's faster. It's okay with me. Eventually we'll get into something else, but I really, really love this car. We're going to make her faster and I'm totally happy with her. I think she's just fantastic. One of the big reasons I considered this car um, is because of the hatchback. The back seats fold down, 
the A8s, you have to get a D5 for the back seats to fold down, which is ridiculous. So it's got plenty of cargo room. The hatch is huge. I could put all kinds of stuff in here if I want to, but I don't want to scratch the leather, so we'll be a little careful. Last but not least, I gotta let you guys see this absolutely beautiful twin turbo 4.8 liter V8. And it makes a hell of a noise and it pulls like a fucking bat out of hell. This engine is absolutely insane. I'm glad it's a 14 and not a 12 or a 2010 like all those other motors have. This car does need a little bit of work, so I have already ordered things for it and they're on their way. And I'm gonna have some motor service done just as maintenance. And I think at that point, the motor is gonna come out. I'm gonna do turbos, I'm gonna do intercooler, I'm gonna do injectors. I'm gonna try and push like around seven, 750 all wheel horsepower. This car is all wheel drive, it's not rear wheel. I can't wait to film more videos on this car and I hope you guys watch it because it's gonna be really exciting. So, driving the 970.2 Panamera Turbo, off-rip, this car is way more comfortable than I would have thought a sporty car like this would have been. We are in comfort right now. It's on air suspension, I mentioned that earlier. It's got Sport and Sport Plus. Even in Sport Plus, the car is very comfortable and still controlled. It does have a bit of a harsh ride. It is a harsher ride than the Audi but I guess that's to be expected of a Porsche. You know, you don't really buy it to be super comfortable, even though they are. Even a 911 or a Cayman, I mean, 911s are known to be one of the most daily drivable, super sports car ever in the world. In the steering, let me tell you about the steering. It's fucking fantastic. Everything people say about Porsche steering is correct. Yes, this isn't a Cayman. It's not a Boxster. It's not a 911. This is a big, heavy, 4,300 pound super saloon. And it handles like a fucking Amtrak train. I'm telling you. The, the steering ratio in this car is so good. It makes you forget about the size of this vehicle, about the weight of it. It's absolutely fantastic. I, I would die literally to drive a 911. I can't even imagine how nice of a vehicle that would drive. I know one of the big things in these Panameras that people complain about is other than the rest of the car being full, fine, luxurious materials, they use this plastic on the steering wheel. And I know it can get scratched and faded, but look at how perfect this is in. It's in beautiful condition. So I guess that would have been my only complaint, but this is in really nice shape. But the materials in here are really, really nice. Everything is either full premium leather, aluminum, or just a really nice solid plastic. And every single button makes a click. Every single switch makes a sound. It feels so commanding. It's really like driving a private jet. It kind of is what it feels like. So the car is almost warm here. We can uh, do a pull in a second. We're in comfort mode uphill. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's a Stady in front of me here. I gotta be a little careful. I hope you didn't see that. Uh, but basically, bottom line, this car does not get boring to drive. Now to address the elephant in the room. The big, bad, double whammy, two fucking shifty back and forth paddles. Yes, they are dumb. Yes, I did fuck up the gear change when I first got it. But 
I got used to it very quickly. It's not that hard to use. Bam, downshift, downshift, bam, upshift, 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 downshift, downshift. You gotta be a fucking idiot to not understand this. If you can drive this car for a week and you're not used to it by then, I'm sorry, you're a fucking moron because this shit is really not that hard to use. Excuse me, excuse me, idiot. Were you the idiot that was sniffing paint? No, I wasn't an idiot. And you fucking called me an idiot again, well, I would be rolling in the fucking floor. Well, 